Hey, welcome back. I'm Lai. If you're remotely connected to the world of technology, you probably heard about Google Duplex. It's a new artificial intelligence assistant Google announced at its developer conference a while ago. Here is Google Duplex booking appointment at a hair salon. Oh, how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. It's amazing, isn't it? Not only is Duplex able to get the jobs done, it is able to do it reasonably competently without us noticing it's an AI. But, but that's also the scary part. How does Duplex know when to pause? How about those arms and us and those precise intonations? I was thoroughly impressed by what Google Duplex does and how well it does it. Many of you guys want me to talk about artificial intelligence. I guess now is a good time for me to discuss it with you guys. My first impression after watching the video is just like everybody else. Flabbergasted, it's amazing. And it truly is. If I were the lady in the phone call, I wouldn't be able to guess it. There's no way for me to tell. Google also showed us another piece of conversation between duplex and the restaurant stuff. Take a listen. Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. For seven people? Um, it's for four people. Four people when? Um, Day, next night? Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually we leave here for like, after like five people. For few, four people you can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? For when tomorrow or weekday or? For next Wednesday, uh, the 7th. Oh, no, it's not too busy. You, you, you can come for four people, okay? Oh, I gotcha. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yep. So the same thing happened here. Google Duplex seems composed and thoughtful in contrast to the human. This backs to the question, is artificial intelligence that smart now? The answer is of course no, despite the fact that Elon has warned us many times about AI as an existential level threat. As far as I know, one AI trained to do one thing is not able to do another unrelated thing. This is a very important statement. In the case of Google Duplex, since the AI is trained to make restaurant reservations, it will not be able to talk about your favorite color or ask you who your favorite band is. The team at Google pointed it out in their blogs too. One of the key research insights was to constrain duplex to closed domains, which are narrow enough to explore extensively. Duplex can only carry out natural conversations after being deeply trained in such domains. It cannot carry out general conversations. This is the point I'm trying to make. According to Google's AI blog, Duplex is trained with a large amount of anonymous phone conversations to learn how to book appointments, make conversations, and ask for opening hours. That's all. It cannot carry out general conversations, neither is it able to ask different questions like what is your favorite color? It is confined to a specific domain, and this is one of the major characteristics of all AI softwares. From a capability standpoint, Duplex is no different than any other AI tool. The only thing that differentiates Duplex from other AI tools is its understanding of vocal cues like ums and ahs, as well as this one. Mm -hmm. So how, how is Duplex able to do that? It turns out those vocal cues that make Duplex human-like are also designed. 
The system also sounds more natural thanks to the incorporation of speech disfluencies. These are added when combining widely differing sound units in the concatenative text-to-speech or adding synthetic weights, which allows the system to signal in a natural way that it is still processing. In our studies, we found that conversations using these disfluencies sounds more natural and familiar. This is important to note because to duplex, it's not a matter of whether to give vocal cues or not, but a matter of when to give vocal cues. While it would be churlish of me to deny duplex of the incredible capability it demonstrated, it's worth noting that one of the key objectives of duplex is to sound natural, which has led to incorporation of these disfluencies, not the other way around. Google Duplex uses recurrent neural network to understand and interact with humans. In any line of conversation, it takes in three pieces of information, text recognized by the automatic speech recognition technology, features of the audio, as well as the context of the conversation. In the case of restaurant reservation, Duplex recognizes questions asked by the restaurant staff. It also recognizes the accent of the staff, as well as the parameters of the conversation before a proper response is generated. In order to perform in various situations, Duplex team trained the AI to various scenarios. Here's Duplex handling interruptions. Okay, what's your phone number? The phone number is um, 607. Wait, wait, can you start over? The number is 607. Uh huh. 223. Two, two, what? 223. Two, okay, 223. Two, two, Here's Duplex elaborating. Hi, um, I would like to reserve a table for May 25th. Sorry, what day? For Friday, uh, May 25th. And this is Duplex responding to a sink. Are you here? Yeah, I'm here. As you can see, all three situations focus on covering real-life encounters as well as making conversations natural. At a fundamental level, recurrent neural network works better for Google Duplex because it remembers what happened before the question. It is contrasted with the forward feed networks, which takes in source inputs without an understanding of time. An example of forward feed networks would be image recognition. While computers are exposed to thousands of images to recognize certain categories in the picture, the only input they consider is the current image. However, for recurrent neural networks, the AI not only considers the current set of inputs, it also remembers its previous decisions. Let's say Google Duplex is asked to reserve a table between 4 to 6 p.m. in a certain restaurant, and it has previously agreed to 5 p.m., it will remember that decision as a part of the context unit. This is why Google Assistant is so much cleverer at answering questions than Siri. Lastly, let's be clear what Google Duplex is about. It's about advancing technology, sure. It's about showcasing what artificial intelligence is capable of, sure. But more than anything, like any other product announced during Google Developer Conferences, it's about marketing. Letting developers know that if they're developing cutting edge AI systems, they should use Google's TensorFlow platform, which has tremendous strategic value to Google. Not only would Google be able to have control over AI implementations, Google might, in the future, sell more of its tensor processing units, which obviously make money for them. I need hardly remind us that Google announced this AI tool last year that automatically removes obstacles. We have not seen it since. So is Google Duplex dangerous? Well, no. At least no more dangerous than Google Assistant or Siri. It's smarter than them, sure. It sounds more natural than them, absolutely. But the fundamental principle that governs all of them are still the same. My opinion is that at current stage, it's out of our control to stop AI progress. What we can and should do instead is to embrace it. And most importantly, we need to make sure it benefits all of us. All right, thanks for watching. AI research is a tremendously interesting topic for me and many of you guys also ask me a lot of questions on AI so I definitely will make more uh, videos on AI in the future so uh, if you guys have uh, more questions definitely leave it down below. Uh, you can also follow me at Lay Creatives on Twitter to ask me more questions. Alright that's it. I'll catch you guys later.